Hello everybody and welcome back to another modern gameplay video and another Kamigawa video. If you are new here and want to see every modern viable Kamigawa card played in a wacky modern brew, then consider subscribing because that's all we do every Monday and Friday. We're currently live on twitch.tv slash mavenbird, link down below if you want to check it out and hang out on Friday afternoons, that's when we do our streams, and you can maybe play against me. And uh, we're playing some Reinforced Ronin Burn today, and let's do a question of the day for the day. And I think Reinforced Ronin would be a pretty cool card for like a budget mono red burn. So the question of the day is going to be, how do you feel about budget decks? Do you like watching budget deck content? Um, or do you prefer just full-fledged, non-budget modern decks? Or, or do you like budget? Let me know your thoughts. Because I'm thinking about doing more budget deck content, if you like that kind of thing. Um, if there's enough people who say they like it in the comments, we can do um, a budget deck every here and there. All right, so Reinforced Ronin, I think, could potentially maybe be a new burn staple. It's like a goblin guide that at the end step, it picks itself back up as if it dashed, you know, dashed like a Raghavan, dashed like a Zergo. So it can chunk in for two, pick itself up, chunk in for two. You got to keep recasting it, though, spending the mana. Um, but the thing about that is that, like, if you can manage to get it to hit them twice at least... It's basically a Boros charm because you're spending two mana for four damage, but then you can channel it once you pick it up another time and you can just discard it for two mana and cycle it to draw another card and maybe draw into more burn. So I think that that could potentially be a really solid thing to help with the mid game of burn decks. Um, although it could also be terrible in some scenarios where the opponent's got good blockage or, you know, I, I don't know. In some scenarios, I feel like it just can be bad or too clunky. Or if you're in a racing situation, it making you repeatedly take um, pings off of your own, own Eidolon could be a little bit dangerous. Another cool upside of it, as you know that burn decks are usually Luris companion decks. And and then the thing is, you can cycle that Ronin to draw a card, replay it off Luris, pick itself up the end step, and cycle it to draw more cards. So it's like a little card advantage engine, kind of like Burns Mishra's Bobble. The rest of the deck is typical burn. You know how it goes. Goblin Guide, Swifty, Eidolon as our other creatures. Just a bunch of miscellaneous burn, Spike, Bolt, Boros Charm, Searing Blaze, Helix. A Singleton Helix. We got a play set of Rift Bolt and three Skewers. Now, I was thinking of cutting a third Skewer, go down to two, and go up another Lightning Helix, just so we have a little bit more life gain in aggro v. aggro situations. I would consider, I would recommend trying something like that, or maybe cutting one Rift Bolt, just go three, three, and Skewer and Rift Bolt, and going up to two Helixes, because I feel like it's a pretty essential card. And what we're losing out on running Ronins is typically Skull Crack is something, um, but at least we got the Roiling Vortexes in the sideboard, um, which can stop life gain by paying one mana, at their upkeep so their effects can't make them gain life and also good against control um let's talk about the rest of the sideboard cards we got um path to exile if there's like um core firewalker that we need to worry about same divine vex for the mirror matches and also persist our condex and then we got uh, Smash the Smithereens to stay aggressive, burning them while also killing artifacts. Deflecting Palm is there if anyone's got any huge beefy creatures or like construct tokens from Urza Saga or whatever. And then we got um, one copy of Wear and Tear. It's just an additional way to hit a Saga. Our only way to hit a Saga, actually. 20 total lands, and uh, that is about it. So with that, let's get on to the gameplay. But first, a quick word for our supporters. This video has been made possible by our generous supporters over on Patreon, whose names have been scrolling down below. If you would like to join the Patreon as well, the link is down below. And if you need to pick up some magic cards, TCGplayer.com's got you covered. You can find them through our deck list link down below, and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And if you want to play some magic online, you should sign up with Mana Traders using the code that's listed in the description to save 15% and you can rent and play all the magic decks you want. It is what I personally use to make my videos. And with that, let's get on to the video. Hope you enjoy. All right, got a game here against Lobo 205. What is uh what is Lobo's Jr up to right now? I haven't watched Lobo's Jr in so long. It's been like a year and a half, 2 years maybe. I think it's been like a year since I watched him. Oh, that's a lot of Ronins. You know what? For science, we're going to try this and see what it does. <laughs> And you know what? I think also for science, I'm going to start on Ronin. I'm not going to start on Swiss Beer. I'm just going to bash in for as much pings as I can and then start cycling them once the opponent gets blockers. They got six cards in hand. All right, Shock here. And Ronin. 
I'm kind of having second thoughts. I'm going to go Swift Spear. I feel like having to not recast Swift Spear over the next three turns would get me in overall for one more damage than the Ronin would. Just having triple Ronins bashing, bashing, bashing. I feel like that could get there. Just don't be like a hyper, like, blocker, heavy creature deck. Oh, is it a mirror? Oh, look at that mountain. It is a mirror. But they're not playing Lurus. It's a Magic Online promo. I don't know what mountain that is, but that's cool. Inspiring Wantage. Um, Ronin. And Ronin. And get in there for five. Please don't play an Eidolon, because an Eidolon would completely wreck my day having to cast triple Ronins every turn. Where is it now? Belching Beaver? San Diego. They looked close when I went past them a couple times. Why would you want to go to Belching Beaver? I thought they were like bad. If you if you want to go to a, a good brewery, you either go to Oregon or you go to like New Hampshire, Vermont, like up that area. Searing Blaze kills the uh, Monastery Swift Spear. Oh, this is going to be a close game. But I am chunking for half their life total here. All I got to do is do it one more time. Just one more time. <laughs> it's so funny. Just assemble Ronin Tron. Bash. There are many good breweries in my area in Oakland. I think I've been through Oakland like three times. One time, a couple times it was like to go to Sacramento and I was like passing through and then another time was for a concert. They gotta stay back with something, right? Yeah, they're staying back with Swifty and they're gonna prowess up and like eat a Ronin. Skewer the critics on top. Okay. Well, I'm just going all out still. I'm just going to swing, 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 and skewer. Get a basic mountain. And let's do the good old triple Ronin again. And this is lethal. Oh yeah, that's right. They can bolt one, eat another, and then they're going to go to one. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I, di I didn't think about it that way, actually. For some reason, my mind didn't didn't think about that. But I can cycle the Ronin to try to like look for a burn spell. Since they saw the skewer, they know they're going down to one here. The question is... If they are a typical regular burn deck, then they probably have like three, two or three copies of, of Lightning Helix. And if they have that, we are definitely dead. The Ocean Beach Brewery? You mean Long Island? Mom says I get three Ronin. Okay, if they have two one-drop burn spells here, we're dead. They got two bolts. They got two cards left in hand, so this better not be bolt, bolt. And Boros Charm, we're living. We're both at one here, but we're both living. This is as close as it gets. They know, dude, you are aware that I have one Ronin in hand. What are you doing? What are you doing? You gotta keep it back. I think they forget I still have one Ronin. <laughs> Wait, what did they reveal with Goblin Guide?
What happened? Okay, they, yeah, Goblin Guide got revealed there, so I was gonna have Goblin Guide plus Ronin coming at them. All right, onto the board. Give me Sanctifier and Vec, and probably Path because they're probably gonna bring in a um, Core Firewalker. And um, deflecting Palm's not bad. I can like deflect a Bolt back at them, so it's not bad. It's not great either, but I'm gonna bring it in. And I think I'm cutting um, Boros Charm, maybe. Or maybe I cut the Ronins on the draw. I think on the draw, having all these creatures is going to be a little too much. I mean, Eidolon is probably what I cut on the draw. Yeah, that's for sure. And then um, Boros Charms don't have the versatility of hitting creatures. So I feel like that might be the cut. Yeah. Yeah, or Karan cutting the Eidolons. Don't like them in the bird mirrors. They could backfire. All right. Well, I have a Lurus and you don't, so I get that free life linker, potentially. All right, I'm going to keep this because it's a turn two Searing Blaze. Could be good. And the Lightning Helix is really good to have here. And this is my Singleton Lightning Helix too, so I'm glad I got it. I really wanted to fit in a second one, and you probably could just cut a skewer for a second one, but I decided uh probably not going to do that. Get a basic mountain goblin guide. Yeah, I see, I see you paying costs. I see you paying costs there. I almost don't even want to swing because I know they're just going to bolt this. <laughs> I know they're just going to bolt it, dude. I saw them paying costs. <laughs> Do I just stay back? <laughs> I'm very tempted to just stay back. Because <laughs> they're going to bolt it either way, right? Uh, Whatever. Maybe we get free information. Maybe we give him a free land. Please don't give him a land. Okay, skewer. All right, good. Good thing I decided to swing. We got free information. They're bolting it anyways. Eidolon doesn't seem very good in this deck. Take two per time you cast Ronin. Yeah, but like when we're the aggressor, we don't care about our life total. So it's only in the mirror matchups where that's really bad and we just end up siding out Eidolon. A lava spike. Okay, well, at least they're not getting a creature draw out, so that's fine. Um. Sunbay Canyon, I know I could be fetching for a basic mountain here, but I feel like I'm going to need to fetch a Sacred Foundry because I'm going to end up cracking my Sunbay Canyon and then I'm going to be out of white mana. All right, getting there for two. We can pull this back with the Helix, maybe. They got four cards left and I'm at 12, so I feel like I could live. System 4200, thank you for the tier one sub for 41 months. Oh, gee, how you're seven months away from being in the four year resub. That is crazy. Thank you so much for all the support over the years. I appreciate you so much. All right, Erin Massaw, and let's Searing Blase. Killing the Eidolon, pumping our Swifties, going down to nine. And I'm not dead yet. I'm I'm uh, in range of three bolts, but I doubt their hand is triple bolt here. They've like, they got two cards left and they're in top deck mode. I doubt they got triple bolt here. Oh no, I could have bolted and gotten around that. Dang it. That sucks. I clicked too quickly. That could cost me the game in all honesty. 
Again, that's the kind of mistake that wouldn't happen in paper. It only happened on Moto. I accidentally clicked through. I wanted a bolt and pump with prowess and live. That's sucky. Got a land and they only got one card left, so I should have a decent chance here. All right, we can fetch for our sacred foundry now. All right, I'm gonna sorcery speed helix here. Please connect. Don't have your last card be skull crack. Thank you. All right, go to combat. Get in there, and I I have lethal. I have lethal. I just double bolt. Boom. Exaxi's 10. Got there? Nice. Got there in the burn mirror. Even winning while on the draw. That's crazy. It's usually burn v burn is like whoever's on the play wins. But we got lucky enough for them to not get a uh, like a creature on the first turn. Like the creature on the first turn always does the heavy lifting in the burn drawouts. But when they don't get one and we do, that's a big um, advantage for us. It basically puts us back in the aggressive position and them on the defensive. So GG. And now that we're partway through the video, if you felt it has earned a like, a comment, or a share, I'd really appreciate it. It helps grow the channel. All right, thank you. All right, this is our first time in the Kamigawa season going up against ZLS704, and I'm excited to see what monstrosity they brewed for us to go up against today. That is nothing but creatures. I'll keep it, though. Because if they're playing a very creature light deck in like the early game, the early turns, then my creatures can get in pretty good. The question is, do I start on Ronin or do I start on Swift Spear? Probably Swift Spear. I gotta commit permanent creatures to the board before the Ronins because they're temporary creatures. But I'm gonna take a lot of self paint off Eidolon with double Ronin, casting them over and over every turn. Okay, so is it like a a goblin charbelcher deck? They mulligan to five. Get in there for one. All right, Strike It Rich. It is indeed a Charbelcher deck. All right, what would be the more aggressive play, Double Ronin or Eidolon? I'm just gonna go Eidolon, just stick to my guns, stick to my gut. Yeah, Goblin Guide, the abbreviation GG. I never thought about that. Pyrotic Ritual, they take a couple damage. So they can get out the Belcher here. The Belching Beaver. Another one, they take another couple damage. Okay, do I have Lethal here? If I go Ronin Bolt Skewer, do I have Lethal? No, Swift Spear Bolt Skewer would be more aggressive. I think I do have Lethal. Yeah, that, that is, that's enough, right? Yeah, 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 that's just, oh my goodness, that is Xaxes. Oh, they are mad. That, we lucked, we luck sacked. We were supposed to be dead there. Wow. We got super luck. Good thing I, I thought about the plays through before I did them. Thought it was more damage and it was just enough. All right, so give me a smash to smithereens. Give me wear and tear. Oh, deflecting palm though. Oh, I'm gonna go for that. <laughs> I, I'm I'm gonna go for that. Um. Uh, let's cut searing blaze and a couple a uh, rift bolt and a skewer 
actually a helix and a rift bolt and run it like that okay yeah well yeah we need to get that palm win what's up beating a sandwich cemetery gatekeeper an option or is idolon superior here idolon is superior we uh tried cemetery gatekeeper and burn and it didn't turn out super well you can check it out on the channel if you want it's up there on youtube just search cemetery gatekeeper burn or cemetery burn rather i think is what i titled it what's up alec deflecting palm is so spicy i thought of a theory of how to make ramen spicier what if you were to just boil water and then dump hot sauce in it and then just dry out your ramen and then just dump the hot sauce water into it and then just let it sit and absorb the water and then just pour out the excess hot sauce water and then you should have some real spiced up noodles I want to give that a try sometime. But definitely not with this sauce because I showed you guys this sauce like two months ago and I'm still not finished with the bottle. It's low. It's almost done. But it's it's Dave's Dave's Gourmet Carolina Reaper sauce. And oh my goodness, this is the hottest sauce I've ever bought. Like I'm a chili head. I, I eat all kinds of hot stuff and hot peppers and hot sauces. And this is definitely the hottest thing I've ever consumed. Dave's Gourmet Carolina Reaper sauce. It is legit Carolina Reaper mash. It is not any kind of like fake or extract thing. It is like legit Carolina Reaper mash. And yeah, it, you can only use a few drops at a time. Like it's really that hot. Cause like when I, when I was like buying bottles of, um, seven pot primo i could just down that stuff like could, i could literally drink from the bottle of it like seven pot primo is nothing all right we're gonna go for goblin guide and get in there have you tried thor's hammer i have not but i've seen it what what peppers are in what pe what peppers are in that and thor's hammer Just use the sauce as the water. That wastes a lot of sauce, though. Turn timber symbiosis and desperate ritual. Pyretic ritual and belcher, belching beaver. Yeah. So if they got an untapped land here, we lose. Belcher decks are kind of broken when you think about it, but then again, they need to like get the Belcher out, have it survive. They need to draw it in their opener, which they were lucky enough to do that twice in a row. They got to get it in their opener and have like enough mana sources to get it out quickly enough. So I guess it's fair, but it's like still kind of broken when it works good like that. Just double ritual into it and then just die. Um, so yeah, it's it's broken, but also not. Like, you gotta get a nut draw for it to be like that. And they just got the nut draw. Alright, this time, should we just aggressively mulligan for deflecting palm? I kind of want to. But just let me know what kind of... Okay, it's red and chocolate ghost. I've I've eaten chocolate ghost before. Seven pot dougla. I haven't had I I've not eaten a dougla yet. Carolina Reaper, Maruga Scorpion, Jigs Jigsaw and Ty. I've never had Jigsaw either. That is a pod that I have I have yet to try. Oh, this is a one lander, but it's got a lot going for it. I'm gonna keep it. Goblin Guide's not gonna give them lands because they don't run any lands. I mean they run one. So that 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 actually sounds like it'd be a pretty good sauce. Like I I only really go for sauces that are over 1.5 million scoville because if they're if they're under that, they're just not hot to me. I have a decently high tolerance, so my sauces need to be over 1.5 mil or else get it out of here. It's basically baby food at that point if it's under a million.
on my second bottle of it on three months period. Nice. But if you want the hottest sauce you've ever tried, I'm telling you, Dave's Gourmet Carolina Reaper. I've um, back in the day, like when I was like first getting into like super hot stuff, I bought um, Dave's Gourmet Insanity sauce, and that was a really hot sauce for me back then. Cause like Dave's Gourmet does a good job with actually making authentic, really hot stuff. Like no, there's nothing fake in there. Like just, but yeah, Dave's Gourmet is really good with making things actually hot. Because I've had other sauces with Carolina Reaper in it before and it's like nothing compared to this. This is, I think it's just straight up mash. Just mash it up, put some garlic in there and call it a day. Amiria's call. And pass. All right, this is gonna be a little close. If they can get the desperate ritual nuts here. Okay, they didn't, good. Monastery Swift Spear, and we will just go for Lava Spike. Getting there for six, and they are dead on board. But if there's any deck in Modern that would actually sideboard Fog, I would expect it to be Char Belcher, Belching Beaver. Hashtag not sponsored. Yeah, I'm. we're not sponsored by Belching Beaver. I'll, I'll buy a bottle of that Thor's Hammer. Jackal, I'll give it a try and I'll let you know what I think. And they scoop it up. I want to like reveal my hand here to like show them that I'm on a brew. I don't want them to think I'm on like meta burn. All right. Well, GG got there against Belcher. That was a pretty straightforward matchup. I feel like Burn's going to win that every time unless they get that double ritual and the Belcher nuts every time. <laughs> I really, really wanted to deflecting palm them, but I guess we'll live that dream one day. Got a game here against Conrad Wonder Dog, and we are going to be on the play here with some... Ronin burn. All right, there we go. Gonna give Ronin a try, just as Destragus wanted us to. Um, we start on Goblin Guide though, because it's the permanent creature. It gets priority over the Ronins. Objective: get in with as much damage with the Ronins as possible before we just end up cycling them to get more burn spells. Seems pretty straightforward. Like, if you wanted to build a creatureless burn deck for some weird reason. Um, Reinforced Ronin could actually, even though it's a creature, it could fit in with that, like, because you can just cycle later. You know, Reinforced Ronin could actually be a potential new piece to go in Mono Red Burn if you were, like, on a budget. Like, I could see that happening. We'll definitely have to brew Mono Red Budget Burn with Reinforced Ronin um, in the near future. Because I do have a budget deck planned for next week or next next week or whatever. I don't know when this is going to be posted, but yeah, one of those weeks. And uh, so yeah, budget decks are coming back and I think budget burn could be another good option with the Ronin. In all honesty, this should have been mono red budget burn because it could have been a really good opportunity to do that with this, a good opportunity to do that with this new card. Boros Norn Sisters. Yeah, you're right. Like the Ronin can pick itself back up just like the White Mane Lion can, but it can't repeatly, like it can't repeat it though. The White Mane Lion can just do it a million times per turn. The Ronin only does it once. Spire Bluff Canal, and they're going to cycle stripped, stripped, striped River Winder. So the good thing is that Living End doesn't actually kill my Ronins because they just come back. <laughs> All right, Swifty. Let's get a basic mountain. Play Swifty. 
And you guessed it, Double Ronin. And getting there for seven. And we don't have to fear um, the instant speed cascade here because good old Simeon Spirit Guide is not here anymore. He's with Ugin now. And two mana. Are they going to cycle a, a Triceratops? No, they, uh, Brazen Borrower, the Goblin Guide. Bounce back my Ronins. I can still do all four things next turn. Come on, go for the, the living end, I dare you. <laughs> Architects of Will. Another Spire Bluff. And they scoop it up. Cannot beat the Ronins. All right, onto the board against Living End. Uh, Sanctifier and Vec can exile some of their cycling creatures, like Architects of Will, but not all of them. So, I mean, it can it can kill the Canyon guy and some of their red stuff. They're gonna cycle maybe. So I could see it. Um, Deflecting Palm can deflect, like, if they manage to, like, living end a big fat 5-5 five five and swing at me with it, I can deflect that and maybe get them. But I don't really know how much that's coming in handy, but I know that I do not want Searing Blaze, so we can straight up cut that. And then we might as well just bring in the Deflecting Palms to give it a try and just cut a Lightning Helix, because it's clunks. And run it. Let's do it. Maybe I should have brought in Wear and Tear because it can kill as foretold and that might be an issue. But too late. I already submitted. Luris, I choose you. That's going to be a mulligan. That is way too awkward of a, a mana hand right there. Go to six. We'll keep that one. And I think we can ditch a land here. Ditch the Aaron Mesa. Leyline, yikes, that shuts down two of our things. So I'm really just hoping that they have no blue stuff to cycle and that the Sanctifier can just put in work. I guess that's my goal. Oh, grief. I think I just scoop and not reveal Sanctifier. All right, so Leyline, definitely bringing in Wear and Tear. You know what? To get around Leyline, I think we bring in Roiling Vortex. And uh, what what else did we say? Wear and Tear. And then let's cut some direct burn spells. Like some clunky stuff like Rift Bolt. Does this say each opponent? No, target player. Rip. Um... We could bring in Smash to Smithereens, hoping that they have an artifact, because it doesn't target their face. Um, I don't think they're going to have an artifact, though. That's the thing. I don't think they're going to have, like, Dragon's Tooth or whatever, Dragon Claw. Let's just run it and hope for the best. We are a very creature-heavy burn deck with the Ronin, so, like, that can help us get around it. What's up, Zen? Can I have the the link of that deck that is redacted for YouTube? Um, yeah, you can exclamation point deck. Oh, you already did. All right, cool. All right. Um, yeah, that's can be very very bad if they have the ley line. Do I want a mulligan for a more creature heavy hand? I'm I'm kind of feeling like I do. Cause I mean this is nuts if they don't have the ley line. 
But they're not going to keep a hand without ley line, right? I think I got to do a card flip. It's been like five months since I've done a card flip on the channel, maybe longer, but we got to do it. All right, card of the day is going to be this Sprite Dragon. This is the first card I found on my desk. All right, so if it's heads, we are mulliganing. It's heads. It's heads. We're mulliganing. We got to get a creature every draw. Double Eidolon. I guess we're keeping that. Throwing away skewer. And they didn't! They didn't have ley line! You gotta be kidding me. YouTube is gonna be mad at me for that one. They're like, Marin, I know you gotta ex you can't just expect the ley line. You gotta keep what you can. I understand. Stop yelling at me. Just wanted to take a risk for once. For I mean a millionth time. Man, that's a feels bad. I just threw that game. Right now, they would have been at 18, and we'd be swinging with Goblin Guide and Swift Spear and bolting their face down to 15 and getting it for four. They'd be at 11 right now. They'd literally be at 11 right now. And the next one was going to go land, Boros Charm, Bolt, and they're dead. Like, I was going to have turn three lethal with that first hand. That sucky is a ducky. All right, get in for two. And cycling doesn't count as spell casting, so they're not even taking idle on damage. Remand. Now they cycle the waker of waves and they're gonna scry. Cycle Stripe River Winder. Of course they're cycling all blue stuff when I brought in Sanctifier and Vec. You gotta have red stuff in there. Alright, let's see if we can get a Ronin in here off of our Sunbit Crayon. We do get a Ronin. We're going to take four damage. But we're still winning the race. <laughs> going to cycle another Waker of Waves. All right, get in there for six. Put them down to ten. I'm kind of wanting them to just just uh, do the living end thing here and get back all those five power guys so that I can double deflecting palm them. This would be the perfect time to do it since I can live on two life. Like this is now the time I want it to happen. And I, I don't think they have any more time to wait. I think they have to go for it here. They need a red source and they got electro dominance. But then they're going to take eight damage. And if they have to shock a red source here, then they're going to just die. Electro dominance and as foretold are pretty bad right now. Foundation breaker evokes so they can kill one of my things. And that doesn't count as a cast. So it just completely gets around it. So that might actually save their life right there. Okay. Can the game be a draw if I die and they die via deflecting palm at the same time? Who wins? Like, 
if I kill them with deflecting palm, but they kill me with combat damage, like at the same time, how does that work? All right, get in with the reinforced Ronin, and I think we're gonna cycle Ronin here. I'm pretty sure it would result in a draw, right? I don't think I've ever seen a draw on Moto, like where it says the game is a draw. Like it's usually like this person wins the game at the end. Like if somebody runs that one white enchantment in commander that makes the game a draw, then then that's got to be the way to see it. But if if that card's got to be bugged though. <laughs> Down to five. They're they're taking a big risk if they go for as foretold living in here because like they'd get put down to one life and any spell would kill them. But lucky for them, I actually don't have any. Yeah, the white enchantment that makes the game a draw. I forget what it's called. It's like this old, like I think it's like an eight drop enchantment. It might be less than eight. But it just like it just says in two turns the game is a draw or something like that. Or like has two counters and when it becomes depleted something happens okay this is an obvious um violent outburst so i'm gonna cycle here i need a burn spell any burn spell that's not a burn spell that's a burn spell okay go to combat swing get living ended here and when they take the two pings off Eidolon, I just bolt their face. Can't believe we salvaged that after mulliganing the god draw. The turn three kill draw. And now this is a turn six kill. Bolt you. <laughs> oh, that's gotta be it. GG. Taking down a uh, teamer as foretold living in. Nice. Uh, but I, I was really curious to see what would happen though like if we got the deflecting palm draw like and just like drew the game i don't know how that would result like if anybody would win or if it would be a draw let me know if you know in the comments down below got a game here against mr jets 99 we're gonna be in the draw here with some ronin burn is it ronin or ronin because back when i played um 007 nightfire i called it ronin um that is going to be they're playing gigantha yeah that's going to be a keep because they're affinity and we know that we can use these searing blazes to good use here like they're going to play like cheap little mem knights and stuff so i'll have searing blaze targets treasure vaults consulate dreadnought okay it's vehicles Really want to try Pain Train in Modern for some reason? What's Pain Train? Frog Mites. Alright, Goblin Guide. Do I want to trade Goblin Guide for a Welding Jar? I mean, they're probably going to just play a 7-drop Affinity Guy here and then just like crew the console at Dreadnought. I don't want to trade off Goblin Guide for- I mean- It'll lower their artifact count. Will they take it? They'll probably take it. I'm gonna do it. I feel like I'm gonna be giving them a free land here, like a free Urza Saga or whatever. Sojourner's Companion. Yeah, they can't trade. They need to keep their artifact count high for their Sojourners. Pain Train runs vehicles and creatures that give value by being tapped. Yeah, that's basically what vehicles are. You run like Night Market Lookout. You run uh, like Pain Seer. Yeah, that, that's what I was fearing. The Consulate, the Consulate Dread not being crewed from those guys. All right, well, we can go Sunbit Crayon and then let's Searing Blaze here. Oh, the welding jar. No. All right. I think I'm going to stay back to chump.
and they drew a saga. So I'm on a time limit because that's going to get a shadow spear. Happy fun times. All right, block the seven. I need a land right now, or I have no chance. And they're grabbing Gigantha. Give me a land. Thank you. Okay. Um, that's a start. Searing Blaze time. These pain lands hurt though right now. And uh, let's suspend a Rift Bolt and pass. And maybe, maybe, like, I need to get another one drop burn spell and I can win here. They can just make a Saga token and then crew the Dreadnought again. Mech Hanger. So they're playing Grease Fang combo. You allowed to talk about music on stream? Talk about music? I'm pretty sure, yeah. I, I think you just can't play music. You can talk about music though. I'm just a metal fan myself. I've talked about metal a lot on stream. And we die because the Saga straight up crewed the consulate dreadnought. That's a good idea, man. Like, because the Saga can fetch a Consulate Dreadnought too. Consulate Dreadnought and Affinity? Why has nobody thought of that? That's actually pretty good. All right, give me Smash to Smithereens. And Deflecting Palm's not bad. Wear and Tear can kill a Saga and an Artifact, and Path is not terrible. And we can cut um, Rift Bolts and a Skewer. Eidolon's pretty good. Searing Blaze is pretty good. Boros Charm can probably be pretty expendable here. They're going to have some good blockage, though. I feel like Ronin is not what I want in this matchup. Give me the Skewer back. Yeah, I think we just go like that. What kind of metal are you into? Because I feel like nowadays when I when I when there's another metal head around, they're always like, "Oh, I love this band," and then I hear it, and then it's just like like this very Sabaton esque kind of like melodic metal with like clean vocals, like singing like ah, you know, like I I don't like clean vocals in metal. I don't. I have to say it every time. I do not want clean vocals in metal. Like, I, I enjoy my metal completely distorted. Just toilet bowl vocals all the way through. Slam metal, grindcore. That's what I like. I like dirty extreme metal. But when you show me some melodic stuff with synths and singing, I'm just not into it. All right, Goblin Guide and get in there for two. What's up, Freaks Fire Show? Welcome back. And then I, I also like me some some deathcore and black metal and de um, black and death metal. But um, the the cool thing about those genres is when they're when they would actually do talking or singing, it's kind of like what they call like demonic talking. You know, like they kind of talk distorted. Like it's not actually like. It's not clean. It's not clean. It's still like distorted, like talking when whenever they're doing non vocal parts, like witchy vocals, like witchy kind of vocals, you know, like Infant Annihilator does. Into some tech death. So stuff like uh, Necrophagist and uh, like Born of Osiris kind of stuff. I like that stuff. I feel like a Necrophagist has a really bad reputation, but I think they're really good. Like they're very talented and just people give them a lot of SHIT, but I think that they're like actually really good. I've always been a fan of them. Oh, I meant to do that on the Sojourner so I can bolt it. Rip. Well, that was a mistake. Well, I'm just going to get in for a little ping of damage here, and then I'll just bolt and then Boros Charm and we should have it. Uh, 
Unless they brought in like Metallic or Buke and screw me over here. Very unique band. Yeah, that's the thing. Very, very unique. And like bands like Dying Fetus too. I, I like respect the heck out of bands like Dying Fetus, especially because Dying Fetus is a three man band, but they just make it work. Like they're very talented the way how the, the vocalist, um, the, the bald vocalist guy, how he can like shred, but also do like death vocals at the same time. And you don't, you really don't see people, um, when, when you see like a death of any genre and when there's like, they're playing an instrument, but also doing vocals, it's usually bass or nothing. They're usually just a vocalist or it's just bass plus vocals, but when it's guitar plus vocals and they're shredding while doing it, you can respect it a lot more. That's why there's bands like Behemoth, bands like Dying Fetus, bands like, um, I forget, but I think, um, I... I don't know, I'm blanking on bands right now. All right, they're going to Mishra's Bobble in response. Let's uh, Boros charm them. I think we got them here. Dead Congregation, probably. I've heard so many bands that they all just kind of get mixed up in my head at this point. Like my Spotify metal playlist has like over a thousand songs from like hundreds of different bands. So I, if, if I can remember like 10 bands, I'd be impressed. But um, my favorite, like whenever I, what gets me going um, in in uh, metal, especially in like extreme metal, is gutturals. When I hear a good guttural, I'm like, ooh, like it really, it really gets my goose honking. I guess that's the 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 word the word for it. It's um. All right, let's uh keep this hand. It looks pretty good. We got the deflecting palm. That really gets me going here in a good guttural, and I usually save those to like my good metal playlist when I hear a band that does good gutturals. Cause gutturals is just like, it's like um, I don't know. It's kind of like a turn on in a way. It's like it's like my metal turn on. All right, getting there for two. Mishra's factory. I guess that's like a better mute of all for them because it's an artifact. Ma no, so masculine. <laughs> Wait, what did I say? I don't even know. I'm just using analogies. Guttural vocals. Yeah, gutturals are great. I mean, they're, they literally just sounds like like a toilet bowl fart, but that kind of vocals is like really appealing to me. I don't know what it is about it. It just sounds good. All right, um, I think we're just going to blow up one of these spring leaf drums to like lower the artifact count here. Actually, no, we're gonna save the, the smash to hit a construct token. I think that's probably smarter. So let's just uh, lava spike them and then just, I guess, hold up path. Dark Seal Citadel, see if they play some big dudes here. They can like make a Saga token and then tap it to Springleaf Drum to like play one of their big guys, but they don't. All right, so let's fetch a Sacred Foundry here. All right, let's get in there. And when they make a construct, we'll smash. For those who want to hear a example of what a guttural is, um, I guess a decent example is look up the song, quote unquote song, if you want to call it that, but it's called Burble, B-U-R-B-L-E, B-U-R-B-L-E by a band called Disgorge. And I'm sure if you're decently smart, you know how to spell Disgorge. A 
and literally it's just like a 10 second sound bit of a guttural. They add a lot of background layers to it, but it's still a guttural. They grab the shadow spear, but they didn't make a construct token. Playing a frog might. Click the link at your own risk. All right, equipping the shadow spear, that's fine. I'm gonna path the frog might and then just double bolt their face. All right. Path. That is a toilet bowl sound. Yeah, basically that's what a gutter is. It's just toilet bowl vocals. Ooh, lava spike. All right, let's get in there for two. And if it connects, we win. Frogman on top, it connected. All right, lava spike, bolt. And if they respond, I just bolt again. They're not even allowing me to cast this. They don't, they don't even need to see the second bolt. All right, GG, got there against Affinity. Sweet. This has been a classic matchup of the ages that's been happening for many years. Burn versus Affinity, a classic matchup. Got a game here against D20 Epic Fail, and we're going to be in the play with some... Buddy once told me. Some uh, Ronin Burn. That's going to be a mulligan on the, the Zero Lander. Oh, this is super clunk. I think that's got to be a mole. Gonna mold a five here. Oh my goodness. All right, well, we're not going to four. I think we're going to bottom lava spike. And okay, so I think I have to bottom searing blaze, hoping that it's just dead here and that they're not playing cheap creatures. Like at this point, I have to take risks. All right, come on. Land is literally the difference of winning and losing here. Somebody redeem draw land, please. I need that good luck. And please don't be a cheap creature deck. Please. All right, Shroom gave us the luck we needed. So that means we're drawing a land here. Thank you, Shroom. All right, getting in there for one and playing Eidolon. I expect this to get pushed. Or maybe they're just going to consider a Thought Scour. Or Opt. Alright, let's go get a basic... A basic Plantain. Petition to make Plantain a new basic land type. Get a basic Plantain. And, uh... Eidolon. Alright. They have a full grip. Esper control, Esper reanimator, maybe. Yeah, it's it's reanimator. So if they get out, our, if they have the persist here, we just lose. And you know, like I always say. Whenever there's an unmarked grave, there's always a persist. My opponents are always just so lucky to have both of them in their opener. But when I played unmarked grave persist, they're never together. They're always like the furthest away from each other in the library. Like all four persists are at the bottom. Un all four unmarked graves are at the top. They're never together. But whenever I go up against somebody else playing unmarked grave persist, they always have them. Have them both. Adds banana mana. Maybe. Or potassium mana. Alright, let's go Goblin Guide plus Reinforce Ronin. They put the Archon in the grave. We bop them down to 7, but they're gonna go back up to 8 here if they have the Persist, and I'm gonna end up discarding my Ronin. And then I can bolt them down to down to five 
and then attack and then they're gonna go down to three but then they would just they just spiral out of control from there they didn't have it oh my goodness they didn't have it okay it's got to be over right it's got to be over they didn't have it there this is definitely it they ain't surviving i got a bolt okay not bad for a mulligan to five not bad at all Yeah, I guess nine times out of ten now. No persist. Oh, look, persist was on the top. The goblin guy just revealed the persist. Wow. Okay. Um. Well, Saint Devire and Vex coming in. Do I also bring in Path just in case I don't draw Saint Devire and they manage to get an Archon? Probably. I'm not gonna bring in Deflecting Palm because if Archon's hitting us, we're losing anyways. Roiling Vortex can stop the life gain from the Archon, and that might be clutch, but I don't know how clutch it would be. Um, we're going to take out Lightning Helix and Searing Blaze. I don't think they're playing a uh, Priest of whatever the reanimation thing is. Yeah, let's just run it like that, I guess. Roiling Vortex is a maybe, a real big maybe. Like, activating that could, could be the difference between winning and losing. Uh, let's just submit. I feel like it's too slow. Because they, they are a pretty fast reanimator deck. Like, they're going to get their Archon by, like, turn three or four. And I don't think Roiling Vortex is going to have the time to do enough damage. But they also have Faithful Mending. So maybe I should bring it in. All right, I'm going to bring it in and cut three Rift Bolts. Because if they manage to like stumble and not find their thing until like turn five or six, then they're definitely going to cast and flashback Faithful Mending, and I don't want them gaining four life. Okay, uh, Sanctifier, I need a second white source though. I got double Ronin and a Roiling Vortex. It's not bad, I'll keep it. But I'm actually gonna start on Wooded Foot Hills and Fetch and Shock a Sacred Foundry just in case I end up top decking the second white source in the second turn. All right, well. Thinking about the math of this, I think going with the burn spells actually get in for more damage than the Ronin, since the Ronins are just going to come back. I guess. So let's just suspend the Rift Bolt. But I guess the benefit of going Ronin is that I get to save my burn spell, so I can just like... Once it gets to like turn four or five, I can just throw out a million burn spells in one turn because then the Ronin's allowing me to save them. So I guess that's one of the benefits of Ronin. This looks like a faithful mending to me. White source. Give me white source. Rift Bolt, your dome. They're fetching in response. They're going to Faithful Mending so that I can't Skull Crack them. Shock and then Faithful. Yeah, that's for sure Faithful Mending. They're going to untap that. They're going to untap it. They tapped the wrong color. They got... Yeah, yeah. Just what I thought. Okay, they're not. They're not. They're allowing me to potentially get them by the balls, though. Fluster storm, that's why. Okay. Sure. Didn't get the white source. Um. I think I'm just going to slam rolling vortex so that I have that potential to 
stop the life gain. It's a lot less aggressive than going like Ronin Lava Spike here, but I'm gonna have to play it eventually, so getting it out earlier is probably better. Rack up that damage over time, up the value of it. At least they're not anywhere near getting an Archon, so that's good. But they're definitely the kind of deck that play like three copies of Collective Brutality, and Collective Brutality is one of the best anti-burn cards, but only if they have a creature in play. Because with Collective Brutality, if you can manage to drain and gain, duress a burn spell, and kill a creature, it just like totally wrecks burn. It's one of the best anti-burn cards. This looks like a collect uh, a kicked collective brutality to me. Prismatic ending on the rolling vortex. All right. At least that's not going towards the sanctifier. Please give me white. Dang it, didn't get the white. All right. Uh, Goblin guide. I'm just gonna start throwing out Ronins actually. Save that lava spike. I'll save that for when I'm going for game. They have counter spell on top. All right, so that's going straight towards a Sanctifier when it gets the chance. And they push my Goblin Guide. They take the Ronin down to 11. All right, they're holding up the counter spell. Still not getting white. Okay, I'm gonna idle on. It's probably getting countered. Did anybody redeem streamer draws land? I, I need that so bad right now. It worked last time. Yep, they're countering it. All right, thank you, Shroom. Now I'm gonna draw land. We still did it. It's failed us. All right, we'll play another Eidolon. Like I'm giving the opponent all the time in the world to find their faithful mending in their in their unmarked graves. They probably already have a persist chillin' in their hand. They just counterspell it again. Oh my goodness. Land, please. No. All right, Goblin Guide. Triple counter spell. Okay. Uh, let's just reinforce Ronin. Happy, miss you, hugs. Let me give hugs to Happy. Remember, the golden rule is when you see a happy lizard, you always got to give him hugs. Glad you're here, Happy. How you doing? Oh, there's a Faithful Mending. That's what I was fearing, so now they can gain four life and loot away their Archon. And we know they have a Persist just chilling in their hand forever. So yeah, we're going to die next turn unless we get the Sanctifier mana right now. Like, we're 14 cards deep into our deck, and we have not found a second or a third land. We are a 20 land deck. There's 18 lands left in a 46 card library. It is more than a one in three chance. Oh wait, less, barely. No wait, it is more. And Mark Grave, all right, this is it, this is it. White mana or bust, please, please. I know I'm the master of mana screw, but geez, there's gotta be some slack sometimes. Yay, there it is. Get wrecked. Play a Ronin. We 
we got saved at the very last moment by the grace of the magic gods. Channel point reward successfully resolve a spell. I know, right? We got to add that one. Unmarked Grave is probably going to put um, the Sarah's Emissary. Oh, they just, it just goes right to exile. They put another Archon right into exile. I thought they were going to grab the, 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 the big white angel that names a thing and gives them protection from a thing. They just scoop it up. They're at nine life. You can keep on going. You can Faithful Mending and gain two life. Wow. The mana screw really made this game way longer than it should have been. Like, we're at turn eight. This game should have ended on turn five. All right. Well, GG taking down Esper Reanimator. It's a good one to take down because it's a tough matchup. Got a game here against Raw to Troll. And uh, we're going to be on the draw here with some Ronin Burn. We're running a 16 or no, 12 one drop creatures. And we didn't get any in our opener. So that's a bummer. And I actually have nothing to do here with my one with on turn one. But if they play a creature, we can Searing Blaze it. If not, we get out turn two Eidolon. Like, I'm going to keep this hand just because, like, the more the game progresses, I'll eventually be able to use these spells. Don't be Esper Sentinel. Oh my goodness. All right, pass turn. Well, I have no choice. They're going to draw cards. Please don't play a second one. Just whatever you do, just don't play a second one. Aether Vial. All right, we'll take the one. Wow. They really are just going to divinate here because double S per sentinel. This is what I'm talking about. It like being like very, very obnoxious. And they basically just replace him for free. And I got him for three damages. So that's something I guess. But um, S per sentinel or Eidolon's not going to do a whole lot when they got a vial. And a saga that they're just gonna grab a shadow spear and give it life link, and there's nothing I can do about that. I'm gonna need to have my sideboard wear and tear and, and smash to smithereens to be able to deal with saga. Otherwise, saga just wins. Ronin, but it's not gonna get in because they can just make a construct and block it. So I think I just play some Bay Canyon and pass, and when they go to make a construct token, I'll just searing blaze it. Oh, they're shocking. Okay, that's good for me. Maybe there's hope. Okay. You know, I should have gotten in with Reinforced Ronin because then when they made that thing to block, I could have Searing Blaze it and then just gotten in for the two damage. Yeah, and that, that could be very relevant with them being at nine. Like that, that could have been super relevant. But I, I literally just started. Like, we we are literally, well, how much? Two minutes into playing this deck. So I'm going to be, like, rusty right off the bat because I haven't played Burn in months. But we'll, we'll get right into the swing of things in a moment here. What's up, Heretic? It says first-time chatter, but I know you're not a first-time chatter. I've seen you here before. Maybe I've seen you follow, but maybe you didn't chat. But hey -oh. Goblin Jiner. And they put a Sword of the Meek in the grave. Thopter Foundry. Oh, no. Yeah, they can just start gaining chunks of life every turn. There's nothing I can do about it. That's game. Oh, Heretic is just now following. I could have sworn you followed before or you chatted before. It was on the other channel. Might have been. Might have been over on Card Market. But I know I've seen you before. 
And thank you for coming over here. I appreciate it. All right, smash to smithereens. Um, wear and tear. And that's it. So we're bringing those. And what are the cuts? Rift bolt, maybe? Skewer? I don't like skewer. I don't like Eidolon when they're having like Aether Vial. Um, but I guess it makes sense on the play. All right, let's just cut some of our top end. Life total's not really relevant here. I think I can actually cut Helix and just keep in a Rift Bolt. Searing Blaze isn't like super needed. Like they're gonna have just Esper Sentinel at the low end. I'm not expecting like Giver of Runes or anything else. So maybe I should have cut that because there's no guarantee they're gonna draw an Esper Sentinel every game. Um, dude, how do we get a mono non-creature hand when we are playing um 16 creature burn? <laughs> Do you play limited in MTGO? Every one's in a blue moon, but yeah. Well, we gotta kill Esper Sentinel or else it's gonna start drawing a million cards. <laughs> what an annoying card Esper Sentinel is. All right, now where's the saga? And they're shocking. It's good for me. Goblin and Jiner. There it is. Putting in the sword. I should have brought in a... Oh, wait, no. My graveyard hate is a Sanctifier and Vec, and that wouldn't stop that. Um. All right, well, let's just pass a turn. And if they get back to the Thopter Foundry, we'll just smash it to smithereens. So I guess that works. Bobble. Portable hole so that they can engine it. Oh, it only costs one red to do that? Alright, they're getting back the, the Thopter Foundry. That's fine. EOT smash. And you know what? I'm going for it. Bolt their face and please give me burn. Didn't get burn. I'm tempted to grab Luris, but I'm also tempted to crack the Sunbait Canyon. I think I'm gonna grab. I think I'm gonna crack Sunbait Canyon here. Dang it! At least I'm threatening a spell here by like shocking that land. Bolt. They made the mistake of going down to three. You, that's rule number one against burn. Never, if you can like play your lands in a way where you don't pay the life down to three, you got to stay out of bolt range at all costs or else that happens. All right, um, we're going to submit it right back like this. Sanctifier, wait, Thopter Foundry is black. So this could exile that if they put it in the grave with the Enginer. However, I don't see that scenario happening every time either because I feel like they're more likely to throw Sword of the Meek in the grave, so I'm not going to bring it in. Shut down life gain? I mean, Rolling Vortex, I have to like pay, um, pay a red every turn to do that. And they're going to like have a repeatable source of that they can do on my turn or theirs. It's just not going to work out. All right, we'll keep this. We got to turn one creature, finally! As we're meant to because we're running 12 of them. So finally we got one. They got the Kamigawa Island Aether Vial. Okay. Boglin guide and get in there. 
Don't play Athalia. With them being on Thopter Foundry, I doubt they're playing Thalia. But it's so awkward having Aether Vial in a Thopter Foundry deck. That just seems kind of weird. Relic. And Moonsnare. Any follow-ups? No follow-up. All right. Um, let's go to combat. Get in there. And um, I think we just suspend a Rift Bolt and pass. Uh, no, let's let's actually just hold up Boros Charm. Now they have the capability of activating Urza Saga. Can you get a basic? You learn the lesson? Nope, they're still shocking. Okay. And I have so much burn. This might not be bad. All right, so they're moon snaring for a four drop, and it is Urza. That is fine. I think I'm going to respond to Urza by Boros Charming. I should have done it with Urza on the stack. But now they can tap for a blue here and maybe counter. And they don't. Okay, good. So now they can start tapping for some mana if they want to do another follow-up play. Another Moon Snare. No, I needed their... Okay, good. They're just cracking the Relic. I was going to say, I need that Construct to not be more than 5 power because I'll be able to Searing Blaze it here. Um, so let's go to combat. Actually, yeah, just go to combat. Get him with the goblin guide. See if we get him a free card. Esper Sentinel. They're blocking with the construct token. Sure. We will searing blaze the construct. And then we'll just suspend a rift bolt and pass and we win on our turn. See if they can get us here. Oh, the Urza Saga can go and fetch a Shadow Spear and then gain a couple life, but we still got them. We can deal nine to their face. But if they can, like, get Urza any bigger. Again, like, Aether Vial in an Urza deck. That just, it just seems really... And you're running, like, Moonsnare Prototype and, and non-creature spells for your Saga to fetch. Like, it feels very wrong to have the Vial... <laughs> They can gain two, but that's not enough. All they got is one colorless mana and vial on two up. Can they stop us? If they got like a metallic rebuke, maybe. And bolt bolt. I'm going for it. Hey! Got him! Taking down a uh, Thopter Foundry combo. I think that was kind of actually a tough game too. Tough matchup. But again, when I draw actually a one-drop creature on the first turn, as we're meant to, it tends to go a lot smoother. And Goblin Guy put in that work there. Nice. GG. Hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. As you know, we like to speed up the longest games in the videos to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut from the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below and check out the entire VOD from last Saturday, or you can come out on a future Friday. Yes, if you have not tuned in yet, Fridays are when we do the streams now. Um, you can come out on a future Friday if you want to catch the gameplay live before it goes up on YouTube and you can even play against me if you'd like. I welcome that as well. So... Today's speed up session is one of those rare occasions where this this doesn't really happen that often and I always like to be transparent and fair and have like the non sped up games in the video be like an equal number spread out of wins and losses whenever possible and speed just speed up the longest games. But unfortunately we have to be a little unfair today um, because the longest games in the video just happened to be the losses. And that's just natural when it comes to burn because, you know, 
it's typical that the losses are going to be longer because the opponent is hanging on for dear life for the most part. So the game goes a little bit longer and then they can manage to turn the game around and beat you slowly but surely. And yeah, it's just the game of survival for them. So when we lose, the game typically goes longer. So that's just unfortunately the way it is today. So I'm sorry we couldn't have any unsped up losses. But this first game, we're going up against a five color zoo deck. It wasn't domain zoo. As you can see, we die here at the end by double tribal flames doming us for Xaxi's 10, which was ridiculous. But a uh, shout out to them for, um, that was a pretty cool zoo deck right there. And uh, it was a Scourge of the Sky Close deck, which for some reason people don't play that card anymore. And I don't know why, because it's still a pretty insane card. Anyways, uh, that game came and went super long without us having the chance to commentate it. But let's go on to this last matchup. And this opponent was playing a very spicy Kamigawa Brew. I, I like it a lot. It's like a Abzan enchantment aggro deck, but it's also a Lurus deck. So all their enchantments are like CMC two or less. And they're running like Sithis, they're running a bunch of sagas or a bunch of new sagas. This new two drop Celestia guy that can put lore counters on sagas. They're playing that tribute to Toshiro Umazawa or whatever that card is. That saga, they're playing the Okiba Reckoner Raid. They're playing Hopeful Eidolon too. So they just got so much main deck life gain and main deck drain and gain, which is what made this round really hard. And on top of that, they had Sithis as well. And Sithis can gain life whenever they play an enchantment. They just had everything to like gain life. And then they had cheap a lot of cheap main deck hate like they had those path to exiles they had dead weights they had myers grass because their removal in the form of an enchantment which is what their deck was based around obviously so it was really cool and their deck seems to be amazingly good against burn i i i wish that their deck would seem better against most other things but it unfortunately it just seems like it's good against burn i i think that if it goes up against anything else it'd have a pretty tough time but still, they got the right matchup at the right time, and they totally mollywhopped us with all their main deck life gain. So with that, let's go on to the wrap up. Hope you enjoyed. All right, let's talk about some reinforced Ronin burn. So I like this card, but I don't think it will be a burn staple. I don't think it goes in here. Like there, it was okay in some situations, but there was just some times where it was a little bit too mana hungry. You know, I feel like this would be better in like a 22-ish land burn deck. If you can find a way to make a clunkier burn deck that does something very specific, like, you know what would be cool to pair with it actually is Shrine of Burning Ragu. Shrine of Burning Rage, like it, it gets a counter on it whenever you cast a red spell. So being able to like repeat Reinforce Ronin with that, it doesn't sound like a terrible idea. So if you make a more clunkier, controllier, um, burn deck um, like with 21 or 22 lands. I feel like that'd be more worth it You'd have more mana to be able to keep on playing the Ronin and still play other things And another thing I said I mentioned earlier was that it would be pretty cool for like a budget mono red burn Like that could be a pretty cool thing um, Because you know, you would you wouldn't be able to play Boros Charm and Helix So you would have a little bit more slots freed up to be able to play um, stuff like that. And then you would probably in mono red burn, typically you'd be playing like flame rift too. So that could just replace the Boros charm. And then you could have a skull crack instead of the helix. And then right there, call it a deck. Um, but then again, if you're on a budget and maybe couldn't afford like Eidolons and goblin guides, so you got to run other stuff like Mog, not Mog flunkies. What's it called? Um, Kelden Marauders and uh soul scar mage like i could see that that working out for like something like that and be cool kind of like to trigger uh what is that runaway steam can <laughs> be kind of funny i don't know there, there's some things you can do with this guy i just don't think he belongs in the meta boros burn deck so that is my conclusion with that and i guess i really don't have any much else to say about this deck because it is just a typical burn deck so thank you so much for watching if you have any ideas for future decks to play on the channel let me know in the comments down below also uh let me know question of the day uh do you like budget decks do you like watching budget deck content on youtube if so let me know your thoughts if we get enough people who like it maybe i can start throwing in budget decks here and there on the channel um if you are new here consider subscribing if you want to see every possible modern viable card in kamigawa played in wacky modern decks um we do modern gameplay every monday and friday so you've come to the right place that is going to do it thank you for watching and we'll catch you in the next one peace thank you so much for watching the video if you enjoyed it be sure to hit that like button leave a comment and subscribe if you're new 
And a huge thanks to our Patreon supporters for making this channel possible. Their names are scrolling on screen. And if you would like to help monetize this channel as well, you can find the Patreon link down below. And if you need to pick up some magic cards, TCGplayer.com's got you covered. You can find them through our deck list link down below and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And if you want to play some magic online, you should sign up with Mana Traders using the code that's listed in the description to save 15% and you can rent and play all the magic decks you want. It is what I personally use to make my videos. And of course, all the links are down below in the description. Again, thank you so much for watching the video and I'll catch you in the next one.